Ciao, Juventini. Welcome back to the AJC. Another victory podcast. God, we love victory podcasts around here, and we've been fortunate this season to be off to a strong start as far as results go. And, uh, oh, man, Lou, we got a lot to tackle. And a little surprise. Empoli threw uh, Syria's way this morning, eh? Job yeah, done yeah, there. Yeah. You oh, know, man. as Pupon said this week, it's, it's hard to defend that title when you haven't won before. Oh, man. Yeah, unfamiliar territory. Bring in Rudy Garcia. And yeah, it's hit and miss. Hit and miss for them. I will say this. I did not have that on the bingo cards. I thought uh, Napoli was going to uh, run roughshod on them and it was going to be a rout. It hurts my Fantacalcio, but whatever is good for Juventus trumps that. So uh, the gap gets bigger there between those teams. We got ourselves a little showdown November 26th which we're going to talk about. Uh, Dom B says it wasn't pretty, but a win is a win. A win is a win, and we're going to talk about this because I got into it with uh, an Inter fan yesterday that wanted to talk about results and style of play and everything, and I had some choice words, and I think you're all very much going to agree with me, and it might change your kind of perception about how things are moving along for Juventus. Anyways, a ton of stuff to talk about uh, in the game, and then really... Setting things up for this showdown, and it is getting set up quite nicely for November 26. What's up to James Lapierre, Dom B, Tony Trim coming in here? Ciao, ciao. I know he just got off the uh, the rink, had a hockey game this morning, so hope it went well for you, brother. Jeremiah, guys, great news about Napoli. Look, I will give my left nut. If Sule could pull some magic off today and Frozenone could do something against Inter, I will literally give my left nut for that. Let's see what happens. Sule will... Give him the extension for the rest of his life if they if he beats Inter today. <laughs> oh man, it would that would be that would top off this weekend like just perfectly going into the international break. You guys all know I'm really not the biggest fan of international breaks with how many there are now and everything, but uh I would absolutely enjoy every second of this one if it finished off that way going into that showdown November 26th. We'll see what happens. Uh, ciao, ciao to uh, Davide, our friend in Australia, Adelaide there. Thank you for joining us. Look, some quick things in the news we got to talk about. It's crazy. We just saw him yesterday, but seriously, uh, wishing Sammy Kadira the best of luck. All right. Uh, unfortunate news there with Sammy. If you guys haven't heard, yes, he lost his right arm yesterday because Max Allegri refused to let go, had to get amputated, and uh, yeah, it's crazy. So, <laughs> like, Lou, this... What's he, what's he talking about? I didn't see that in the news this morning. <laughs> Max Allegri would start him tomorrow, all right? Yeah. Like... Hey. Listen, I would start him tomorrow with the way some of those midfielders look. Like. And we're going to talk about that with the midfield. But it was hilarious to see. Like, he did not want to let him go. He's greeting Licksteiner and still hanging on to Sammy. Like, he's like, don't leave me. Don't leave. It was hilarious, man. Oh, man. Max kills me sometimes. I just want to say, like, that was seeing that on Twitter. What a cool moment. Like, just, like, for, like, the fans, for the club to have two guys that, like, Lich Steiner won seven Scudettos. Like, he was there from the start, almost to the finish. Kadir, an inter integral part of that, that the Allegri portion of those runs. Um, you know, it just, like, you see things like that, and you just feel like slowly but surely this club's, like, coming back to the one that we like, right? A lot of legends around. Like, it's just nice. Warms the heart. <laughs> Yeah, man, and uh, James coming in here, Sammy could start for us. It's one of those scenarios, I think, with Sammy Kadiri that really shows you kind of also something with uh, Max Allegri as well. Like, you stick around for long enough and whatnot. Like, when he first came in, it was unbelievable. And the quality Sammy Kadir brought and everything. But then injuries started to get the better of him. He was on the high wage. And then... Then the questions start to be asked and everything, and that's where it turned. But Those his last impact, years, oh yeah, man. the last few years he just he couldn't stay fit. But that year after Cardiff, when we you know beat Napoli right towards the end, I mean, there's a period where he was scoring every game all the way to the end of the title race. You know, like yeah, Licksteiner, Licksteiner. Uh, I'm curious to see how social media 
if I was around back then, like on Twitter and everything like that, would have reacted to Licksteiner because I feel like he would have been one of the scapegoat players, which is wild for me to think about because he's such an absolute unit. Like he was, he was one of those guys we always talk about you need on your team that's just a prick to play against that other teams yeah. absolutely can't stand. I always go back to that match against Celtic uh, with him going at it with their captain in the air yeah. over and over and over. And I'm like, how do you not love Licksteiner? Like, it's, it's, a, it's crazy. Just, but got a red card in the friendly. That's all you got to know about it. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, basically. You know what? But what I want to say about Licksteiner is I remember, like, obviously Pirlo was a big signing, but he had come out of, like, a rough patch with Milan. It was kind of like, this is a great player. We got him for free, but, like, let's see. Licksteiner, I remember, like, he was the best, like, player at his position at Lazio who were like, they were in the champions league the year before, like that was a good team. And when you met this kind of snagged him against all the competition, it was like, all right, like they can, like there's a element of comp We can compete here. It's not the same one that finished six. It's a serious Juventus. And yeah, uh, yeah the RB comps, he had that game against Spurs right at the end when Lich Steiner came on, like he was unbelievable. I watched the burner bow game, the one where we came back and, yeah. you know, the end that we don't have to talk about but lich steiner was great in that game too like you know Absolutely. and he was over then, so yeah terrific. Lich steiner was an absolute beauty absolute beauty more coming in here ciao 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 everybody empoli handing us a nice little uh sunday surprise juve sits top of the table obviously we gotta wait uh for the later on match there with uh the merdazzurri uh but we are gonna set up the showdown november 26 we got uh obviously we're gonna tackle the game uh, take a place uh, yesterday with Juventus getting the 2-1 victory against Galleri. Uh In other news, obviously, besides uh, Sami Kadiri, yes, he still has his right arm, but it was funny with Max Allegri there. Um, call off the search parties, okay, because Illing Jr. has been found, okay? He is alive and well, got to come into the game yesterday and did so as Metzala. We will talk about that, of course, as well, all right? Starting lineup. As expected, it was uh, Chesney, Gatti, Bremer, Rugani, Cambiasso, McKenny, Locatelli, Miretti, Kostic, Chiesa, and Keane. So I was fine with everything in there. This was actually what I expected. Um, and uh, Cambiasso going on the right side was something I was going to keep my eyes on, is how he's going to play there versus the left side, which is all we've seen so far. And the other was, for me... I actually, as as much as Keane did deserve the start going into this one, I kind of wanted Vlaovic in there because he has scored five goals against Cagliari and because ultimately our offense, when it was firing, it was <coughs> Chiesa and Vlaovic. And I feel yep. like it's imperative like and crucial for Juventus to get these guys firing moving forward. What did you think uh, about that um, just as far as Keane versus Vlaovic goes in this matchup against Cagliari? There's something that like we're missing and like doing the news every day. Like I'm searching for like, what's the reason why Vlavic isn't playing? Like aside from just for, like, there's gotta be a bigger reason as to why this guy went from like a really good striker. Like he was four goals in like X amount of games. He was on fire, gets hurt. I understand that comes back is seemingly healthy and just cannot get a start. Like it is a yeah. very strange kind of thing. And I understand Keen is in some form. You got to rotate and keep everyone fresh, but it's very strange that he, even for a game against Cagliari, like you don't play him, right? Like that's a game Juventus could win comfortably. You know, get some confidence. You got the Derby, uh, the Italian, in, in two weeks. You know, you feel like you want to build those guys. And I agree. I think for me, it was kind of surprising not to see Dusan start this one. I mean, that's yeah. like what, a game in a row now that he's been fit and is on the bench. Like, it's very, it's very odd. Yeah. And Novak Jokovic is in the stands too. The you know for the Serbs here, we got Kostic in there. Kostic, uh, hey, when he plays like that, that's the Kostic I want to see. But yeah. much like Kostic and everyone, kind of that consistency I say is what comes up. All right, Chase KP coming in here. Yeah, end of the dynasty. Oh yeah, don't worry, I got those receipts. I got those <laughs> receipts. So we go through lineup. Yeah, it's just a question mark, and you're absolutely right. Like it's just. It's weird around him. It's been weird around him for a while. Even when we talk about the staggering number of days missed since he's come in and been with us for a short yeah. time, it all just keeps piling up and piling up for Dushan. <laughs> he did start the season off firing Chiesa. 
Chiesa, even in this game, we'll talk about it in his performances. We'll go through highlights. In the first half, there's not a lot of highlights, but we'll get to the end of the match and then give our overall views and opinions on all player performances and whatnot. But uh, it starts off, honestly, um, Gagliari gets the best opportunity to start the game. It was an, uh, Viola getting the ball at the top of the area off a block shot from Petania that falls to him. But Bremer did well in this one to just kind of give him an angle that wasn't going towards goal. Unless he put one hell of a curl on that thing. It was never really threatening. So that was 12 minutes in. 17 minutes in, we get a good free kick. Chiesa just couldn't get this thing to dip down towards goal. He didn't miss by much. It was uh, one of those question marks around this team is going to be set pieces. And yeah. uh, like when you get those dangerous free kicks, <laughs> we were spoiled with some absolute killers. And then we took that power away from them when Cristiano Ronaldo entered the fold, which kind of drove me nuts because Pjanic had an insane rate. Dybala had a good rate, oh, you know, yeah. and then we uh, we took that away from them. But we are kind of that's kind of another little luxury that I think we're lacking in right now is the ability to hit free kicks. I know Vlaovic has hit a couple for us and uh, Milik can hit uh, them decently, but we need, we don't have that specialist that we always had. Right. So it's, uh, it's something that's lacking there. We honestly go through the first half. It's the 42nd minute. Uh, Locatelli finds McKenney on a long ball. He does so good here. Chest it down, tries to play it over to Keane. It goes beyond Keane, but Kostic comes in, puts a ball into the mixer and McKenney followed it up lovely. He just couldn't direct it towards goal with his left foot. Off foot, high, kind of about knee high, had to jump to try and get over it and everything. It's a much more difficult finish than I think some people were given um, him kind of any type of... Uh, flack for whatnot for not directing it towards goal i was really not it was a difficult one to try and direct there um but if he would have done so it would have been fantastic mckinney continues to put in good shift after good shift yeah. for us he, he really deserved a goal like he just like i i watched the game after it finished so obviously i knew he wasn't gonna score but like watching it you're just kind of like ah like he just he deserves a goal for the performances he's given us and just rock solid i mean you gotta you gotta appreciate someone like that who like comes back from alone and just like works his ass off to you know yeah that way we're gonna way. talk a little more in depth about mckinney because there was a comment being made about mckinney yesterday i'm pretty sure you're gonna know which comment i'm talking about and it, it kind of ties into the history of the club so we're definitely going to get into that a little more in depth first half man it What's frustrating for me and one of the bigger takeaways and we'll get to it is just that we can't compose ourselves properly on a team that is ripe for the picking. That game, we should have, by all means, left that first half at least minimum with a one goal lead. You got to leave the first half with a lead there against Gallery. They were pretty much toothless and Juve just could not really impose themselves on that team. And the offense is still concerning that we can't create top quality scoring chances against teams that uh, like that are, these are games you just got to take over control and uh, dominate. And first half was very, very flat for me from uh, Juventus overall. Um, I wasn't really happy about it. Uh, your thoughts on the first half quick before we go through? Yeah, I mean, the first half was more of like what I disliked about last week, which, you know, I caught some flack for this because, you know, obviously when you win, you can't be upset about a ton of things. But there is like a difference between like appreciating a win and thinking, hey, like we can improve a little bit. And I thought the first half was more of that same from last week. Sluggish, slow. We're not really imposing ourselves. You know, maybe they could have found a goal, but like, they didn't really deserve one, right? You know, it's like yeah, no one kind of sums it up, right? They nothing we gave away nothing defensively, but also like really didn't produce anything attackingly. So I, I think the way you put it there, it's just disappointing was the yeah. best word. And I'm gonna get way more in depth after we wrap up the second half on uh why I think it was like really, really frustrating in the first half. And to be honest, for the large part of this game, um Miretti stood out to me as one of the worst on the pitch, which was upsetting considering he got the monkey off his back in the game prior. His touch was brutal. He was very, very slow. Like he just, it, it was bad. Uh, the midfield in general, uh, I thought McKenney was uh, one of our best out there on the pitch. So I'll give him the, uh, the pass there. 
but uh, Loka and Miretti, especially Miretti for me, was uh, was pretty poor. Chiesa kind of ghosted for a lot of that. Uh, we can't get him as involved, and I expected that because I did yeah. say Cagliari's game plan is going to be to double team with the Mitsala and the fullback on the flanks and force us inside. The problem was we had so much time still mm -hmm. and couldn't couldn't just sustain serious pressure where we put them under duress and we're like really asking them questions and that's what's frustrating i i think as well and this is it's come up more and more and it, it will i'm sure we'll have the debate about the forwards and who should be you know pairing kies up front there but kies and keen just do not complement each other well at all and and yeah. Keane's hold up play has been good when he does it, but it's not his first like England is to hold up the ball. He likes to get in behind, like make runs off the center backs a lot like Chiesa does. And you kind of get this disconnection between the two of them. There's no one holding up, there's no one playing off them. It's that basic kind of like football 101 where like maybe Milik could do that, but also Milik's kind of great off the bench. It's just, it's very difficult, I think, up there for both of them. So, yeah, yeah. Now we get to uh, second half here. Let's go through a 48 minute dude. If Chiesa hits target on this thing, would have been one of the goals of the season. An absolutely oh, yeah. smash of a volley off a clearance attempt that falls to him at about 22, 23 yards out. Holy smokes, he didn't miss by much. Um, that would have been fantastic. 53rd minute, Miretti to Costage, cross in front. It's a scramble. Scafet gets a piece of it. It bobbles up. Chiesa's following <clears throat> through here. I have no idea how that doesn't end up in the back of the net, but that was yeah. one of those games that it ends up being for Chiesa. Uh, unfortunately not, and unfortunately for my Fanta Calcio. Oh, man, <laughs> Chiesa. I needed one yesterday from you, brother. Uh, so it doesn't fall. 54th minute. Gatti on a free header uh, off a cross in from Kostic. Um, no go. Just barely missing. And I will say this. I was happy with the approach and the intensity in the second half and the attitude right out of the outset. I said, like, you got to get after it immediately. You got to put them under. You got to ask. You got to actually ask questions of them and force their keeper into some stops. So yeah. I actually at least like that we were approaching it uh, in a strong yeah. fashion. Um, 59th minute. Just when we're talking about on, so anybody that watched the live watch along, the magic word is Coco Melon, okay? Because James Lapierre is like, oh man, my kid wants to watch Coco Melon now. We were laughing about Allegri Ball versus Coco Melon. Second, we mentioned Coco Melon, we get a goal. Great ball in from uh, Kostic Bremer. Of all the guys to leave free in the area, you don't want it to be Bremer. This guy could have had so many goals last season. Uh, he oh, yeah. could have, man, he could have had double digit goals. He's always like in the mix. The way the ball moved on the cross and the way Bremer like leapt up to hit that, like it was like it was like watching FIFA. Like I was like, holy crap. Man, it was unreal. The hops on the guy, man, he's way up there. All right. Yeah. And uh yes, yes, Coco Melon, definitely the magic word. Bremer gets us the lead one nil. So the defense doing it all for us. Okay. And then um for us, ten minutes later. Another cross in, a corner from Kostic. And, uh, man, what a way to see this one in for Rugani, who's on a great run of form for us, okay? Uh, off the belly, off the bar, back down, off the just the top of the sack there. We called it a dong shot. And in yeah. for Rugani there. And uh, they were looking at it. They were uh, talking about uh, handballs and everything. L'Arbitro Nick uh, just said that's what they're looking for because... Uh, they were fiercely protesting with the referee for some. Upon first look, it did indeed uh, look like it would be called back for handball. Anytime an attacker touches the ball with the hand or arm and they immediately score, it must be called back regardless if it was deliberate or not. But looking at the replay, it never hit his arm, hand, or anything. So it was a good goal. And Rugani, he deserves it. He deserves it. He's been playing uh, lights out. I thought he should have been called for the Azzurri. He didn't get the call up. Like Toloi? Toloi? Yeah, he, over Toloi easily. Easily I mean, over Toloi. To, I think, remember everyone a couple of weeks ago laughed at that Mourinho quote saying that like, you know, ah, oh, like I'm jealous of Allegri. He has Rugani and he doesn't even start. I mean, what like what a solid player that is. And I've been guilty of criticizing him from his first stint. And, you know, when he first returned, I didn't like it. Yeah. What we've seen in the last two years from him is just just a rock solid player. 
man, it's, and to be fair though, like, and I always go back to that because I was one of the guys that was hard on Rugani too. And I do still firmly believe there was a moment where Juve should have probably moved the project because he wasn't progressing like at all. Yeah. And it, you go from every time I could still think about it. I could think about the games. I could think about his appearances. He looks so jittery, so shaky, like always like, nervy and on edge and i'm like man he just doesn't look comfortable and he's playing next to guys like Kellini and whatnot and he's still looking shaky and i'm like but now that's gone now like he is just he looks calm and composed out there and it's in rhythm like it's kind of a leader great. a little bit which is pretty crazy to think about right like in the way that perrin or pensolio show leadership you know, from the bench you know but rugani comes in and he brings stability like you tell that the guys next to him like playing with him I, he reminds me of that quote Pepe at the 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 Agnelli 100 like Juve like forever game that they had like during that last international break. They asked him like you know what it means to be here, and it, he was like, oh, it's like a little odd to be here next to legends, but it's a reminder that Juve isn't just a club for legends; it's a club for the everyday man. And yeah. Rugat is like the symbol of that. Rock yeah. solid, steady, does need to play every week, doesn't complain, works his ass off, produces. That is going to come up. That saying is going to come up a little bit later on in regards to some other players around the club currently. Um, so we are going to bring that up because it was so true at the time. And I know you and I like spotted that immediately and we're like, man, he's so right. And uh, we'll get to all that. But uh, here we go. Get the 2-0 lead. I'm This game's dusted. For me, I'm like, Cagliari to get two goals on us, the way our defense is playing, absolutely not. But six minutes later, man, Dosena turns into this heading beast. All of a sudden, after we go 2-0 up, I don't know what the hell happened. Bremer, so I go from praising Bremer, and uh, he got back right before this goal and did an incredible job back-checking, and he ran all the way back, cuts off Shomorodov as he was he subbed in, came on on a break, and cuts it off, goes out for a corner, but then loses, loses his mark, just enough for Dosena to get this header, and it's just out of the reach of Tech. Um, nice header, nice goal, I will say that, but yeah, you got to be pissed off from a defensive standpoint. If you watched Bremer after that goal went in, he's... Uh, crouched over on the ground and he just hammers the ground because he knows he just gave enough uh, for that to happen and uh, he knows that uh, he let down but I loved that reaction these guys are committed to not giving an inch I absolutely love that reaction that's the right reaction not a head down moment but a, a like an accountability moment a reactionary yeah. moment where he realizes he doesn't point fingers he doesn't say anything he just kind of smashes the ground and gets up again and knows it's on him. I love that. I love that. Same here. And I think in the last month, we've really seen a lot of leadership from Bremer, especially with, you know, like the injuries, Danilo going down. Bremer has really stepped up as kind of like a leader in this side. We, we asked this the last time I was on the show about a month ago. Who are the leaders? Like, who are the guys that can, you know, push this team forward? And I think Bremer in the last month has really shown it. It's things like that. It's accountability. It's, you know, it's that frustration for conceding, but like, accountability like that's on me let me yeah. fix it right yeah and to be and, honest, uh, i'm probably conceded now for the first time in six games then maybe against center right get it yeah. out now yeah it was uh it's good to see it's good to see the commitment and the accountability so commitment to allowing nothing and that's going to be crucial for juventus moving forward is the defense whichever one side we want to specialize on we got to be strong at something and at least uh, not conceding is uh, definitely, definitely uh, one that uh, you got to build off of uh, for Juventus. Dosena makes it 2-1 on this one. 81st minute. Man, Dosena again. Another header. Uh, Tech getting fingertips to this one and then the outside of the post and out. Close call there. In the end, that's as close as Cagliari would come to... Uh, Tying it up here. That's it. Juve see it out. Get me the hell out of this thing. Okay, top of the table for now, baby. Hey, you never know. The games have to be played. I'm not expecting uh, Frozenone to pull anything off. But stranger things have happened. You just never know, okay? Um, and now we could talk a bit about the actual performance, the actual full match and everything and our uh, overall view on it. Really, for me... 
I'm happy with obviously the win. I'm happy with the second half attitude. I'm not happy we didn't keep the clean sheet, but it's not be all end all. For me, the biggest concern I'd say going out of this one for Juve to really evolve and maybe why, maybe why, and I was saying this before, we have to look at our players and we do have to look at our quality, but in this particular match, the amount of time and space our midfielders had and they could not impose their will on Cagliari is a big concern for me. In January, come hell or high water, I want to see an offensive-minded, creative midfielder come in here 1,000% because this team lacks that tremendously. Now, while I respect your opinion and everything, and I'm not picking you, I'm just pulling it up here, Jeremiah, I don't think we missed Rabio. okay? I don't, I like, this is one of the things that I kind of put in this Rabio thing and everything is for me, it's not... The guy should have a bigger, like, missing factor when he's not in there. And I don't... That wasn't the case. We had um, so much time. Game plan was an issue. You're playing Cagliari. I don't think you need Rabio against Cagliari. If Rabio continued to play this year the way he did last year, I would say, okay, you probably notice him missing. But it hasn't been that way this year. For me... It's an attack-minded, offensive, creative midfielder. We need it desperately. This team yesterday, with the amount of time that midfield had, they gotta, they gotta take control, and they couldn't. That stood out for me, and it affects the offense. While we're shitting on these offensive guys, how far back did Federico Chiesa have to come back to get the ball? Oh, you know. Baby. I mean, that, that's the other thing, too. Like, he is like, not always have to come back deep to get the ball, but he's not like a Dybala number 10. He's not going to, you know, create things. They need someone to do that job. Like, Lou, who made the only through ball play to one of our forwards yesterday it was Federico Chiesa that hit yeah. Keen and he just couldn't trap that. Well, by the way, you have to trap that, settle it, and get a shot off in that <laughs> moment. Tough on Keen there. But Chiesa is the only one that gave us. A, a through Arthur, ball to an attacker. Arthur made two through balls yesterday. There was the Moretti one to Caustic on that chance right at the start of the second half. And there was the Locatelli ball to McKinney when he made the run and he hit over the ball. Those are the only two things that our midfield did to like create anything. Like they just, and it, it's really sad that I, that's one of the things that like really annoy me because people are like, oh, we play ugly, we play ugly, we play ugly. But it's like, yeah, but you're going to play ugly when you're only you know, creativity is the flanks, right? Like everyone knows that they know your yeah. midfield isn't creating anything. They know that you have nothing to give in the center, but to just stall the other team. And that's yeah. just the reality of the team right now. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And here we go. So Mark coming in here with some uh, choice words about Locatelli saying, if he was anything but Italian, the vibes around him would be so much different. He's a bang average player. Again, for me, it's, he's, Always been, always has been a two-man pivot mid, period. His best stretch of form for Sassuolo that everybody wanted to lead to was just that, a two-man pivot mid. Um, the assistant coach that worked a lot with Locatelli told Romeo Agresti, who in turn told me that he always said, once Locatelli has a third midfielder in there, it changes him. And that's when you see some difference and variation to his play in terms of his role though with this team I don't think it could be understated the impact because we bomb our other Metzalas forward and you could see it plain as day they abandon they just jump ship up there Locatelli hangs back and his game is and his role for me if you want to put offensive creative ability and all that on him in this setup then it's not fair to him because, and even if you look at the game against uh, Fiorentina, he barely got over the first half, okay? He barely, barely got into Fiorentina's half. The Metsalas, that's where the creation has to come with based on how we play in this setup and the fact that we bomb them forward to be support on the flanks and support the strikers. The creative part is on those guys, okay? Um... Everybody is just latching on to this Pirlo thing 
with Locatelli because he's playing as a deep lying midfielder. But to be honest, his role for me has been clear as day for a long time. And that's almost acting like another center back in our setup. And that's honestly like him. That's probably the best thing that like he could do. Right. Like that's, that's what he's really good at. Ah, People think that Locatelli because of the Euro is this like bombing for goal scoring, like assist making playmaker. That's never been his skill set, right? No. It can do it here and there, but it's not ever been his skill set. He is very good directing the midfield right in front of the defense. He first line of defense is Locatelli. In his numbers, if you look at them, especially in the last month, rock solid. Barely any giveaways. Pass completion is very good. Tackles, interceptions, he's like leading midfielders in that. Yeah. The, the numbers back up that he's been very good. Yesterday was a little rough, though. First half especially. Second work. half got better. Second yeah. half got better. Yeah. But Yeah, I agree. It, 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 it's the roles. And I will argue this, that if you took Locatelli out of this midfield, you would have a disaster. You would have a disaster. Okay? I, I will argue that one to the death, that if you take him out, He's the glue right now holding it all together, and he is crucial. So some might make the argument that Adrian Rabio is the one we miss because there's some win thing with Rabio in there or whatnot. No, man, for me, it's Locatelli. Uh, if you take Locatelli out of this midfield, it's big-time uh, struggles. But overall, what? from those Metsalas yesterday, you should be you should be running roughshod on Cagliari yesterday. Yeah. So for me, in January bring me a creative midfielder hands down okay major major thing yeah no i agree performances who was everyone's man of the match for this game um let's get to uh you lou who was yours for this game easy one's got to be bremer the goal he was solid for the most part obviously we talked about the goal that we conceded but i i think bremer deserved the man of the match for this one rock solid yeah, and everybody's kind of going that way. And you know what? I was, and I switched it up to Rugani only for the fact because yeah. of that conceded goal and whatnot. Um, I ended up giving it to Rugani, but I think they're in the shout. I think uh, Weston McKenney gave himself a, a yeah. decent shout there, but definitely the guys at the back, they did it all. They shut it down, yeah. and they ended up uh, scoring a goal. So you see Bremer, you see Rugani coming up here, and you see McKinney coming up here. So I think it was between those guys, and uh, there you go. Uh, Nico Lucy, hey, I was happy to see Nico Lucy Cavillo. I was happy Finally. to see Illy Jr. in there. So now let's talk a little bit about a decent amount of time, too, that Illy Jr. came in as a Mitsala. So, Lou, what was your... What were your thoughts on how he played in that spot? Um, there were some things that I, I liked. There's some things that I didn't like. Um, I don't know. I got to see it more because I, I, it's there. Were, there were times where I thought like he looked really good. That there was a chance that uh, Vlahovic created where he like separated from the corner from two guys and he, he made his way in and then um, he left the ball for Ailing and he just totally whiffs at it. It's like yeah. the most I've ever seen, but. Like, his position there was really good. It was that of a Masala. Like, he made a good run into the box. Like, you could see, like, a little inkling of it. And then there's just times where he looks kind of confused. But I feel like if he if he's given the space, like, against a smaller team, where, like, he's kind of, like, a little bit deeper, like, he can make those runs, he can whip a ball into the box, there may be some creativity there that just, like, could be added because it's another left foot that could get the ball into the area, right? Yeah. He... Intriguing, I guess, he, is the word he, for it. He was in a great spot for that opportunity. I thought he was going to score. He should have scored. He knows yeah. he he, he uh, muffed that one and whatnot. But old habits die hard. He kept drifting to that left byline. I don't yeah. want a Metzala drifting out that way because you give a giveaway, you're kind of leaving your guys, your other boys in the middle high and dry. So I... I kind of got to agree with Mark that I don't really like that position overall for Illing. Um, I think it just hinders his strengths too much. I think like you look at Illing, you look at the pace, you look at the dribbling, you look at what he wants to do. The guy's got to be high up the pitch. I don't think Mitzala's for him. That's just me. That's just me. 
you know. I would like to see him do it with uh, Cambiasso next to him because I think that Cambiasso, like, he likes to come inverted a lot. That's, like, a lot of what he is like, really good at. And I think it would give him a little bit more freedom. Um, I, with Kostic, that I that I don't think will ever work. They'll, they'll run into each other too much down the left. I, I can't really blame Max for trying it because like we are just kind of like all hands on deck right now when it comes to the midfield. Yeah, and, you know they want to sign someone in January, but you know who, who knows what our financial situation or who will be available, like what that will look like. So even if they can bring in someone, and who knows if it's a creative player, right? Like we. There's still a lot to be defined there. So I don't mind him trying it, obviously. Like, you know, you, you got to try something, right? But Yeah. With, Han- with Hans Nicolusi Cavilia and everything, um, and then Rabi, of course, coming back, he just had to face the suspension and everything. Um, I think uh, we'd be okay. And I actually liked a few of the little things I saw from Hans Nicolusi Cavilia. It's just a small, small sample size. But... Smart kept it simple, was able to ping balls, switch field to cross mm-hmm. corner there uh, and whatnot very, very nicely. I'm okay and comfortable with him playing. And if it came down to it, Illing Jr. or Nicolucci Cavilia to come in and help the midfield, it's going to be Cavilia for me every yeah. time because that's his natural spot. So I don't think we're still finding any solutions for uh, Illing Jr. I do have a theory that I believe he is actually going to be going in the winter. Um, oh, I hope it's not true, um, or maybe we get something where he's still our property. But I have a feeling he's going to go. Everybody, um, we'll we will see. Of course, when the time comes. Um, I, I wanted to say on, on Nick Lucy, he's like a good, solid player. There's a reason why they kept him around. Like he was very good last year on loan. He went. People forget he started the year in Serie B and ended up in Serie A for a relegation competing team in Salernitana. But he's a very solid player. I just. It's hard to find playing time when you're only playing once a week. You know, yeah. like it, it is Oh tough. yeah. It's it's one of those things uh where you know still some fans are going to say we're we've got too many guys out of position everything like that, but uh, the biggest thing I can go on is if it ain't broke, you don't fix it and you don't add more to the mix and whatnot. If we do have some guys out of position or whatnot, it is what it is right now. Things are working, okay? Yeah. You don't change this by any means. It was something we talked back to last season as well, but last season we were getting blackouts. This season we're not. And I do have a theory that the one competition is a big part of that because I think if we played as unbalanced as we kind of have been in some games like this and you did that across multiple comps, you'd be gassed. Like you yeah. gas a lot, and I think we'd be seeing some different results, some mixed results, kind of like some of those other teams. But for me, um, I will say this: um, overall, the confidence in the defense has to be there. For me, I think the next step, and this has nothing to do with Max, but it's it does come down to abilities, qualities, and the players. Because And now we're going to kind of get into this discussion uh, about uh, McKenney and everything that comes up and whatnot. Because for me, it's it's clear. It's clear as day when you watch this team and everything. And uh, I want to separate this, this coaching discussion and everything like that, okay? But the first thing's first. The biggest thing, the most important thing, is the results, okay? That is number one that trumps everything. Everyone knows I don't agree with the style, okay? And I see things a little bit differently. I would like things a little bit differently. But the question for me is starting to arise in my own mind that maybe, just maybe, these guys aren't capable of playing in a more aggressive approach, style, manner, and everything like that, okay? Without sacrificing maybe too much. Maybe too much. And I got into this with an Inter fan yesterday that we put this question out there. We might as well tackle this here as we start to get into things and dive a little deeper. But I said, on a scale of 1 to 10, everybody, how confident are you going into this Inter match? Lou, where are you at on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, Between 7 and 8. I'm the same. It, I think I think that one thing. So you say the results first. Obviously, are key. 
second. And I think this is different from last year because last year there were spans where we had results and things would kind of, you know, buckle. I think this team really believes in the, what they're doing. Like, yes, the style is not great. Yes, it's it's Catanacho. But I think the team believes in the Catanacho. There is a belief in like, hey, this is how we're going to separate. This is our strength. We're playing to our strengths. It's frustrating, but that's it. So I think that when you have a team that is getting results, they believe in the style of play that they're playing, regardless of what we think about it as fans. You know, I think that because they have that belief, we're seeing a lot more leadership than we did maybe a month ago. We're seeing some people emerge, step up, like really perform in some of these games. Games at home, Inter don't do well at the Juventus Stadium. I think I think that we're not that far off from them. I think that, you know, like Inter's a good team. They got a little bit more experience. They have a better attack. Their midfield's deep. I don't think they're like light years ahead of us. I I agree. I'm at a seven to eight in between there. And that score is brought up tremendously because of the defense. I have full confidence in the defense, making it tough for them to score. Okay. When we talk about the other phases, the midfield and the offense, that's where I start to kind of lose a little bit of the backing and the confidence. Okay. But if I look at this team, this inter team, they've had to squeak by some teams that are nowhere near as strong as we are at the back, okay? Um, Roma being one of them. So then an inter supporter comes out and says, oh, so you're going to play 11 behind the ball just like they did and whatnot. And I said, what difference does it make? If we get the result, I could care less if we put 15 behind the ball. The result is all that counts. And he goes... You know, and he continues to talk it up and whatnot. And I said, listen, I go, are you telling me that against Man City in that Champions League final, you would have bitched because your team won the trophy because they had to play that exact same way that we find ourselves having to play? Listen, everybody, yeah. man, we may man, not... Saw that game off with 11 behind the ball for the last half an hour. Listen. So they're walking around complaining about it? No. Yeah, l- listen, it's all noise, everybody. At the end of the day, it comes down to the results. Yes, you want your top guys, which I'm going to get to, okay? You want your top guys thriving. You want your players, um, you know, cooking and whatnot. But again, we get to a quality thing, which we'll get into. But I had to laugh at him and I said, it's a joke, man. You're telling me against Man City, you would have bitched because of how your team played if you pulled that result? That's absolutely a joke. There's no chance you would have. And he said, we didn't do that. We were picking and choosing moments. I laughed. I laughed at that. I said, okay, so when you do it, it's picking and choosing your moments. But when other teams do it, it's 11 behind the ball. Look, any way you slice it, it's smash and grab. And at the end of the day, it's all noise. Show me in the table where it has a column for style points. Yeah, there are none, buddy. It comes down to the points and the results, okay? If you want to get into quality, I will talk about... I will talk about quality. For Italiano last week was that they don't know how to see off games. That was like a big thing that came out was like, hey, huge, like, huge. So they don't know how to see off a game when you have to, right? I mean, I, I'm not saying that like Juventus are breaking, you know, barriers with the way they're playing football, but they're getting results, right? My one worry about this game is Inter's defense, like after ours, or maybe they're right up. The, the numbers are close, right? They are close to us in terms of defensive numbers. They're tough to break down. That's my one worry about here is like with our forwards kind of not firing, you know, like we could be looking at a stalemate where it's just like, wait, like it's a, it's a Mexican standoff to see who concedes first and that's who wins the game. Yeah. And that worries me a little bit. And now, now we're going to get into quality. Okay. Again. So Jeremiah says we have strikers who are not scoring goals consistently. Keen has not scored since April. Is this on the coach and the style of the play or is this on Keen? Has he not had the opportunities? Absolutely he has. I saw Moise Keane standing alone yesterday 1v1 with a keeper and decided to not even take an attempt or a touch beyond the keeper and have a shot on goal. That is not a mentality of a top striker. I'm sorry. He held the ball up and went backwards to the top of the area. You, ha- I'm sorry. This is not on a coach or a play style. These guys have had opportunities. Chiesa. Could have struck yesterday. Missed from like four yards away from the goal. Didn't hit target. 
What are we talking about here? These guys need to be – Vlaovic has missed headers where he's alone. People it, gave uh, Allegri crap for the Milan game, and it's like, yeah, I mean, we won that game 1-0, but Keane had a sitter that he absolutely – like, yeah whiffs at right in front of the goal like that's that's your that those are player mistakes that's not your coach those are player mistakes listen it, it comes down to quality and you guys we have to accept the fact that quality is is lacking okay we yeah. don't have the killers up top up top part of the struggles is those guys themselves another part of the struggle for those guys up top is our midfield you saw it yesterday plain as day Calgary Without disrespecting them, but still kind of, they sucked, okay? And in the middle, we had so Not much it. space. I play in the middle of the pitch. If a team gives space and time for me and my midfield partners, we are going to chew you up and rip you apart. We love those games. We thrive on those games. I'm not even a professional. I would assume... Moretti would be licking his chops at a game like that. Locatelli would be lip licking his chops at a game. All these guys... But the fact of the matter is they do not have the quality to just really grab the bull by the horns and just take control. And maybe, just maybe, we have over-assessed some of the quality in some of these guys. Now, this isn't the be-all, end-all. It's not saying we're junk by any means. We're not, okay? We're a good side. But... A strong side and something we should be striving to for me I always say it a million times you have to be able to go through the gears Lou pointed out Italiano not knowing how to close games off okay we we have got it sorted out when it comes to the defensive side of things that next phase that next transition through the mid through the offense it's gonna be tough sledding I think because what? of these guys I, I really, really do. Max can do differently. I think you're going to disagree with me on this. And maybe most of the chat will. I think we play a lot better when Milik starts. Man, because I, I don't. So here, here, here's the reason. I think when Milik starts, the strength going forward right now is the flanks, right? The flanks, the, the crosses is where we're getting a lot of our creativity. I think when Milik starts, like he gives you a reference point in the middle. He's really hard to mark. It's hard to double mark him out of games. His movement's really good. When he comes off the bench, and he's really good off the bench, like do, like he's solid in that role. But when he comes off the bench, it, the game changes a lot. You get a lot more crosses into the box. You get a little bit more creativity. I, I just I think if, if, if Dusan's not giving you that right, and Keen isn't giving you that, at what point do we just look? Maybe maybe Milik and that creativity is like what we need. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, everybody, okay, for me and the quality and everything like that. McKenny got brought up yesterday. He's being praised by a lot, and rightfully so, for the attitude, whatever. But, yeah, he lacks technical ability, okay? Allegri had some words that he said, and some fans took exception to it. But he said, what McKenny lacks technically, he makes up for a million times over, essentially, with work rate and attitude and uh, physicality. And the comment was, this is what Juventus has come to. Um, I don't know if set person needs to be a little more familiar with the history of Juventus. We were literally built, built on guys like that. Yeah. Okay. You had your talented players. You had your extremely talented players. And then you had your absolute beasts that lack that technicality that got you by with that. Torricelli was one of them. Tachinardi was another one. Pesotto was another one. Delivio was another one. The list goes on and on. Conte was another one. The list goes on and on. We were literally built with these guys. The work rate, the drive, that hard-nosed attitude was always bare minimum. Even the highly skilled guys had that. For me, right now, the problem with Juventus is not the McKennies, okay? The problem with Juventus and why we can't take that next leap and be that strong side is because the guys that are to be your skilled killers aren't those guys. Yep. You're Vlaovic. I mean you're Federico Chiesa. I love Federico Chiesa. 
they have to be your killers and we have to stop looking for excuses for these guys because the difference between the UV of old and the UV of now is not shitting on the hard work, hard nosed players. It's that the skilled guys did their job and they did it to a high level. They didn't care if we were 442, if we were 4321, none of that mattered. They got the job done at all costs. They had belief in their ability, they were confident, and they got it done. And you know what? Right now, those guys, they aren't those guys. Just just look to, like, you know, like, doing the news every day, right? Like, the the last thing we report about Vlaovic and his his market is, like, that there is not not a top club in Europe that is interested in bringing him in at any point. Chelsea this summer, we're thinking about that swap of Lukaku, Pochettino said, nah, I'd rather invest in like this young guy, Niles Jackson, who we know nothing about yeah. over someone like Vlaovic. I'm not saying Vlaovic is overrated. I think he's really talented. But there is kind of like a, hey, you know, maybe these guys aren't giving us the most that they can. Maybe they're not, you know, excelling at a top level. Even someone like Chiesa, like his market and the teams he's rumored with, not like crazy teams either. There was Liverpool for a while, but the last one was Newcastle. Like it's it's not even teams in the top four in the, like England, and, yeah. and uh, like it's and they're not knocks on them as the players. I like both those players, but maybe something that we don't see as fans instead of just blaming the coach consistently or it's this they don't have enough confidence they don't have that. Maybe they just don't have that drive that like top players do. Maybe they need to step up. Just like a month ago, we said, "Hey, Locatelli, we need some consistency." Hey. Bremer at start of season, we need a little bit more consistency. Those guys backed it up in the last month or so. Those guys that you questioned, you know, your guys like your Wes McKinney, why does he play? Because he works his ass off, right? Yeah. Maybe some of those guys need to work their ass off a little bit more. I will say in Chiesa's defense yesterday, not his best game. He came very deep to get the ball. He yeah. tried a little bit more to, you know, impose himself on the game. Unfortunately, he did not, but there was a little bit of effort, right? And that goes to the quality of the mid, which again, it all it all evolves around quality, you guys. Uh, against Cagliari with that much time and space, there's no reason Chiesa should have been dropping that far back to pick up the ball. It's ridiculous, okay? As a midfielder, I would be embarrassed, okay? But for me, these guys miss a ton of opportunities too, okay? Um, we got to call it all around where it is. The bottom line, though, at the end of the day, is a team overall isn't going to give a shit if they're getting the results. And to be honest, you just got to keep going. The Whoever starts up top has to just keep going. You got to keep fighting through. You got to keep working. Because right now what we're doing, it is working. And it's hard to disagree that it's the best for the club when you've got one of your best starts historically, especially defensively and everything. This is the best start we've had in several years. We're top of the table going into a match where Inter and Frozen only play, and then we are in a first place matchup against Inter. Okay, we are the only anti-Inter this season by the looks of it. Also, I want to add one more thing on Chiesa and Vlaovic because everyone's a style of play and rhythm. The, the amount of days Vlaovic has missed in the last two years is absurd. Like, just little injuries, little knocks. You want to talk about rhythm or style of play? That is part of it, right? You know, these guys don't have rhythm. Chiesa, every international break, picks up an injury right before the break. Yeah. What's up about rhythm? Like, these are guys like, so what is that? Is that Allegri's training? Is that, what is that? Because that's the, that's a two-year thing. Like, that's, again, like, accountability I love both those guys. They're talented players, but you want to talk about rhythm and style of play. Like, how can you have rhythm when you're out injured with muscle injuries or back spasms or God knows? Valvich is 22 years old, has black back spasms. I can't figure that out. Like, yeah. something's like. And while I praise McKinney for the work rate and everything, it also shines a light on something else I will talk because he talks about. I'm, I am see myself as a number eight. I want to play there. That's where I prefer. But at the end, I'll play wherever I want, I want, whatnot. And now you have some comparisons in the live chat to Lippi's Juventus. And they were defensive-minded but played really different than this team today. Again, going back to my point, the skilled guys Lippi had, these guys can't even lace up their boots to those guys of that day. Okay? They got the job done. Del Piero... You think he sits around 
bitching. Uh, I had to play 10 today. Oh, I had to play off a wing uh, with Viali, Ravinelli. What, it's like, do you think? No. Put him on the pitch. He gets the job done. It's At the end of the day, these guys have to take pride in their own ability, have confidence, and get the job done. I'm sorry. I see way too many opportunities missed by these guys that need to kill these teams off, kill these games off. And right now I see a lack of confidence in scoring goals, but I'm watching them in training, banging off all sorts of crackers and whatever. Do it in the game when it counts. It can be done. And you know, the other thing is too, like people will say like, oh, like striker, like they need like 11 chances to score. Like again, like great strikers, like great goal scorers. Yeah. If you think about like all time great goal scorers, would you ever say like, oh yeah, like he needed five chances to produce magic? It's now it's like you need one moment of magic and at all time like a good goal scorer will de- define you. Like I just don't You you I, can't I, deny I that there's a little bit of a style clash with a guy like Vlaovic, I think, and our team, because these guys more is expected of them in this particular setup, okay? But at the end of the day, has he not had opportunities? Has he not has Chiesa not had opportunities and whatnot? These guys are getting opportunities. I would love to go into every game getting 30 shots on goal. I can't remember who it was talked about this the other day. One of the coaches on a on a platform he said, I was, yeah, coaches would love going into games getting 30 uh, opportunities. Uh, that's it, yeah. It yeah, but he goes, yeah. It, it, it he's like, we would love that. But he's like, it's not the reality. It's yeah. not the reality. It doesn't happen like that. So sometimes you get less, sometimes you get more. You got to battle through. Right now, as it sits, it's all kind of noise because we sit top of the table. You've got a crucial, crucial matchup coming up against Inter. We talked earlier about how we feel going into that game. I think it's going to be a very, very tight matchup, Okay. I feel like the majority of Juventini still have this lingering feeling and PTSD call it from blackouts and the possibility of getting spanked or whatnot and stuff like that. I'm not there. I am not there when it comes to this matchup November 26th. I think they are going to struggle to score against us. I think we will have a better balance of play than we have had uh, definitely against that Milan game. We are at home, okay? What I like most about this matchup against Inter, and we all we are almost at Storm the Barn, everybody, so get your questions ready, fire them through. And I saw one earlier from Mark. It wasn't a Storm the Barn, but I will pull it up because I think it was a great question. The pressure is all on Inter. And somebody else came back at me and said, no, this was a Juventino, said the pressure is on us. Uh, no, how I couldn't disagree more. The pressure is on them. They are the heavy favorites. They have been the Scudetto favorites, all of that. Okay. We are essentially seeing this year as the anti inter. I don't really care. I'm fine with it. The pressure is on them. Okay. We are also at home. We're playing on house money. Like you said yesterday. And I love that. We're playing on house money. The pressure is on them. Make no mistake about it. Okay, make no mistake about it, because they also know if they drop it and we take that little bit of a gap, they still have multiple competitions to focus on and whatnot. And then they're going to be in tight for Juve. We're still okay. We're still okay. And even if this one gets away from us, which I don't expect to happen, I don't think will happen. Even if it does, it's not over for us. It's not over in round 12. Okay. Even if they were to win today and win against us, five points in round 12 is not the be-all, end-all. But that is why for them, it is crucial. The pressure is on Inter, in my opinion, fully. Lou, your thoughts no, on I, that? I agree 100%. And listen, top to bottom this club, what are they telling you every day? Well, hey, our goal is the top four. Our goal is the top four. Our goal is the top four. Like around the league everyone expects inter to win the league this year i think everyone predicted at the beginning of the year so the pressure is on them they are like right now the they were in the champions league final last year they're like the italian golden boys i hate them but that's that, that's what they are right now like that's that's the reality so the pressure is all on them as far as the title race goes i do think that this is a major shifting point in the race 
I, it's not over. I think it'll still be pretty tight, but I do think if Inter get that five point gap with the experience that they have, you know, that's there's still a lot of players from that team that won the Scudetto, a lot of players from last year. They have a lot of solid pieces. I think that will give them enough leeway to start to get some momentum to build here because what happens in the winter is obviously the Champions League goes away for a little bit. We have a little bit difficult December. I would like to see how we rebound from a loss like that. It's different from Sassuolo because I feel like if Inter beat us, it's going to be because they outplayed us, right? Yeah. You know, not because we shot ourselves in the foot, right? But what I would say inversely for Juventus is if we get a taste of that top with the way we've grown this season, just seeing the mentality of the players kind of shift in certain areas, I think once Juventus like feels the top of the table, they have that weak advantage, I, I think that that would be a good starting point for us to move forward, to start pulling away from them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. Jeremiah comes in, if Inter score first, then we might struggle. It all depends on who scores first. This is a question mark that will follow this team. Like I said, we still have question marks. It's not like we've solved all the years past issues and we're running like top now. We still have ways to improve. I think even if we were top by seven points right now, we would have things we have to improve. That's the way my mind works. You always want to strive for more. Look. The transitional phase between midfield and offense has to be corrected, okay? If Inter score first, fortunately enough for us this season, we've only had to find out what we're going to do when conceding three times. Four times if you count yesterday, but we had a two-goal lead. We're one win, one draw, one loss in the three games previous to that, okay? Had to come behind against Bologna, ended up getting the draw. If, we, if that happens against Inter, we could potentially struggle. But Inzaghi's got kind of a similar style to Allegri too when with leads and everything like that. And I think it's going to be a tightly contested matchup, everybody. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a one-goal game. I'll be honest. I mean, I, I think I, I honestly was thinking about the other day. Like, I think it'd be like a, a one-nil or like a nil-nil. Like, yeah. I, I think these are two really good defensive teams. Like, I think that you might sit there and it might just be a Mexican standoff for 90 minutes. Right like, now, you've got Inter yeah. only allowing six goals. Juve only allowing seven through these opening yeah. matches. So it's, it's going to be really tight. tight. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm not thinking we're getting blown out of the water by any means, okay? We got another compare. You can't compare uh, McKenney to hard workers like Conte. Conte was miles. To Look, the point still stands, okay? So take Conte out of the mix. Tacchinardi, Birindelli, uh, Pesolto. Like, it's to say that we, this is a problem with Juventus, it's not a problem. And that point still stands, okay? But you guys get your Storm the Barn questions in here, okay? And uh, let's go into it. The one thing that does stay with my mind and why I think, and I said it yesterday, we're not going to get answers to our questions, our feelings, our concerns in a game against Cagliari. November 26th, that's when we test our medal. That's when we will know what we have with this Juventus side. Bottom line, any way you slice it, it's all going to be put out there, and we will see what we have out of Juventus. Okay? I can't shake off my mind that Coppa Italia match last season to Inter where we absolutely did not show up. Okay? Do I expect anything similar to that? No. And I'll tell you why. I think we've jumped leaps and bounds in the locker room. Mm -hmm. In the locker room. And I think there is a legitimate bond now with this team, with this side, with the players that are actually there now. And call it whatever you want. Name whoever you want. Do whatever you want for me. It, I don't really care. It's all noise at the end of the day. But I see a team that's far more united than we have been in quite some time. And that's always dangerous on its own. Yeah. So that, 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 that is an advantage in any, when you have a team that like really believes in what they're doing, I do think they really believe in what they're doing week to week. I, I, I think that's a huge strength. Then we haven't had that probably since the last time Max left. I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen that. Now, yeah. I think this team has it has a backbone. It has a, a feeling. You can just see it on the pitch, right? That 
there's a togetherness. It's an all for one kind of mentality. Big time, big time. I'm trying to find question guys, storm the barn. Now's the time to get into it. I want to remind everybody, take a second, like the video while you're here. Please subscribe to the channel. All right. Thank you everybody for your support. Everyone that's joined uh, our memberships, which are available now. That's one of the ways super chats enabled the others. Of course, the merch, you guys loving the Sul Campo merch. Um, that's a big hit. We got to remind the Chihuahuas. It's 38 every single motherfucking day, everybody. Okay. Let them have it. Let them know. I think the chat moved so far that I can't find it now, but Mark had a question, okay, and I wanted to tackle this now, and it was, was it a good thing that we conceded yesterday, knowing what we have on deck? Lou, is it actually, could it be a blessing in disguise? I think it is a little bit. I think it's just like, it. it's like, uh, it, maybe it humbles you a little bit. You get like kind of that like a little bit of edge. We're not conceding. There's no pressure. We're not going to. And it's kind of just like a, like a humbling, like, hey, just reminder, like you're good, but you're not great, right? You know, or like you're great, but you're not invincible. So I, I think it's a good reminder, like, hey, you can still concede, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of feel the same way. It's like it's a good eye opener and whatnot. And just if anything, we'll keep them sharper and focused. The biggest thing for us, make no mistake about it, it's international break. Staying healthy. Yeah. Man, do whatever you guys got to do. Voodoo magic, whatever. Pray. Whatever you want. We can't have injuries coming out of the break. There's a part of me that as happy I was for Bremer to get the call up to Brazil. was like, oh, God, not again. Like, <laughs> you know. Man, <laughs> like, that is going to be the biggest thing for us. <clears throat> Come yeah. back healthy. Joey Cappuccino says that this intermatch – think it could be a repeat of the Fiorentina game if we go up early. Like yeah. if we go up early, he says we're going to shut not be down wrong. and everything. Listen, a draw in that game. So some will feel that Juve will play not to lose, you know, and not necessarily truly get after it and whatnot. Call it whatever you want. But even that bodes well for Juventus. But uh, there's... It's funny because I talk to so many Juventini throughout every single day. You have those that are sitting here saying, I have full confidence that you will see the best Juventus game we've played so far this season. And we will definitely come home with the victory. He says, we will not see the Juventus we've seen in these other games against Inter. Mark my words. Then you have the others. Juve is going to play not to lose. And we are probably going to just clamp down and shell up and everything. And then you have me. And I'm kind of in between. I'm kind of in between. I think the potential for us to turn it up and go and actually play based on how Inter plays as well, which is getting numbers forward and everything, there will be countering opportunities for us, for sure. And again, quality will probably come down to it. Because when you want to pick teams apart and you want to smash and grab, the execution has to be very, very strong. And that's where we've kind of lacked now while everybody knows i've said this a lot of times we probably have to ramp up how many opportunities we give our guys they're not killers everything like that the other thing is there's going to be a very good side on the other side of the pitch that you have to deal with and it's not going to be easy to do that and you can't just all of a sudden say oh we got to play inner we got to ramp it up and we got to go at them we got to generate 25 chance or whatever well it's easy to just sit there and say that but to accomplish that on the pitch would be to give them zero credit for where they are right now. It's going to be a hard-fought battle, okay? And it could be the greasy goals. And if Set Piece FC wants to come out for us, I don't give a shit. I'm happy with it. Okay. Uh, that just made me reminded me of something. This Set Piece FC thing is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's so dumb. People complain about this team not scoring goals. We have killers on set piece. Bremer, Ru Rugani, like is a yeah. can score goals. Like Rugani has that in him. Bremer, Danilo, you know, Vavic, Rabio, like they all have height. They can all score goals on set pieces. Milik, like, why is this a bad thing? It's not a bad thing at all. That ball that Kro Ko Kosic hit to Bremer, that was like one of the nicest goals we've had all year. What is bad about that? Sexy football. Some t maybe just maybe 
you know, some fans have this relationship with the team where you don't like the style of play and then you see other things they are a little more appealing. It's a little sexier and, you know, you want that for your club and whatnot. But I tell you what, right now, top of the table, give me that all day, every day, and I don't care how it gets done. The results are the biggest thing. Just get back to winning. When we were playing ugly, though, and we weren't there, and we're struggling to get fourth, that's a killer. That's a yeah. killer. And that's when the arguments come up that, you know, maybe you got to move on from a manager. And you got to be like, okay, this is not good. Like, where's the progress? Where What's happening? What's going on? Right now, I can't argue with what's going on because it's working. That's the bottom line. It's working. So to shit on something over and over and over, well, we had doubts that the results would stop. We had doubts. There, I'm curious if the sustainability will work, but in one competition, and even when you add Copitalia, it could work. It could work. You could get it done. You could get it done this way the whole yeah. way through. Multiple competitions... I think you got to strive for way more balance and play. But I think the quality level of the players at Juventus is definitely something they have to have to look at increasing. Um, especially particular for me, where it all boils down to the middle of the pitch. Defensively, offensively, everything is affected and you live and die by what happens in the middle of the pitch. For me... The balance is not there in the midfield. It's not there. That's our biggest thing to work on. Outside of that, I got no problems, to be honest, you guys. I got no problems, okay? James said, conceding prevents a Napoli moment. Yeah, that was a full-on blackout. Full-on blackout. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Rugani. Is Rugani your starter now moving forward, Lou? Has Danilo lost his gig as starter? I don't think Danilo has lost his gig. I think he'll get it back. Wow. That's tough. It's tough to pull Rugani right now. Listen, I think that Gatti's probably the weakest of the three. Not saying that he's a bad player, but I think that I, I think he'd probably be in more jeopardy than Danilo is. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Unpopular Gatti, Gatti ends up avoiding caution, something I did not think was going to happen yesterday, but it did. So he will be available November 26th. So that is uh, great for us. Obviously, those guys got call ups. Gatti Cambiaso getting his first call up. And uh, you've got uh, Locatelli, Keane, and Chiesa. Again, hopefully, hopefully, no injuries. Storm the Bar and Charles coming in here. Since we're renewing Rabio. Do you think it's necessary to get Kefren Taram, considering they're the same kind of player playing in the same position? I think Kefren Taram is another level technically um, and has a way higher ceiling. Like, I think we've hit kind of Rabiot's ceiling last year. Last year, yeah. Um, and I'm not so sure we're going to renew Rabiot. Um I think it's still very much up in the air. I talked about this a lot yesterday in the preview show. I think Juve might have to wait a little bit on some and see what your options are. Come summer. I think, and I mean, I, I think the, the bigger players are going to take a while to like renew, right? Like, I don't right. think we're going to see like your Rabbits, your Vavages renewing before January. The allure <laughs> has been bit. questioned, Lou. Like, is there still this allure to join Juventus? I said absolutely just simply for the fact of history and the fact that we are the biggest club in Italy. But if this season ends with a Scudetto... Yeah, oh, yeah. that changes everything. Like, oh yeah, that allure is ramped up. We have allure as it stands, okay? We're scraping by in fourth place or whatever. We still had that allure. You add the trophy to the mix, a return to Champions League... Yeah, you've got that allure uh, heightened. So I would pump the brakes on some extensions and wait to see what options are. That's how I That's how I feel. I also don't think we're going to get Thuram uh, next He's summer. always seemed a little unrealistic for me and whatnot. Samardzic, who, by the way, has an assist on the first goal for Udinese as they take the lead against Ooh. Atalanta. 
Uh, he's got the uh, the helper for that one. Um, it's halftime, 1-0 Udinese. Fiorentina and Bologna, 1-1. My pick in this one was Bologna to win. Bonaventura, man, he keeps scoring. 17th minute, Bonaventura, 33rd minute. Xerxes on a PK for Bologna. They're drawn up at 1-1. And then Ampoli, of course, beating Napoli. At uh, 9 a.m. today, we're going to get the Derby de la Capital. And the, probably the most entertaining thing about that will be Sari and Mourinho because their teams are in shit form. Um, Inter and Frozenone at 11.45. Hey, light the candles. Do the voodoo. Do whatever the hell you have to do. Let's see what happens. Lou, is there a question? Is there something we didn't tackle today? We tackled a lot that you might want to bring up. Uh, we've, we've ran this poll a couple of times, but... So, if we could sign two midfielders, one in January, one this summer, who would it be? I think if, we both uh, agree January If you could just be, hand pick? Yeah. Some artists, which I think would be both of our picks for January, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I Everyone knows I want Samardzic. I think that makes a lot of sense for Juventus from a bang-for-your-buck perspective. Um, I think he checks all the boxes. Loan, right to redemption. The salary, we could triple his salary. It wouldn't even hit $2 million, you guys. Yeah. Okay? That's tripling up his salary. Juve, I think one of our problems has been, under Paratici, was the splashes that made no sense. High wages and all this and whatnot. Samardzic is a smart piece of business for me with Juventus. You won't get stuck. At that price tag, that fee, that salary. If it doesn't work out, you can move on. And it wouldn't really hurt you. It's low risk. But from a ability standpoint and what he does on the pitch, it's exactly what we need in the middle. It also would free you up later on to get Moretti that loan where he needs. Yeah. Where he needs to go somewhere, take the pressure off, and do kind of like the Sule thing. Okay. The second midfielder I would look at bringing in if Taram was a legit option for Juventus and they could strike and make a move, if you bring Taram and Samardzic into this squad, huge, huge. Yeah. Like, those two have been my favorite that we have been linked for big time. I like DePaul as well. And yeah, I, I think DePaul would help us a lot. DePaul would be really, really good. And... Yeah, it gives you so many more options with those guys. And reprieve for Locatelli too, because one of the things nobody really talks about when they talk about Locatelli and how they feel about his plays, the fact this guy has been in there constantly for how long now? It's absurd. It's absurd. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. It And this is one of my things about agendas and perception of players and everything golden boy next principino all this on miretti absolute dog shit performance yesterday crickets crickets okay oh i had to listen to this from bill nye the science guy on twitter there or whatever uh you know and he had to come in there and say well one's played for the national side the other's a youngster whatever irrelevant irrelevant there are agendas out there and we don't keep it level for players. If Federico Chiesa has a bad game after starting three times in a row, it's always tired. That's why he didn't score. That's why he didn't do this, whatever. Locatelli has put in an absurd amount of straight, straightforward games straight through. Yes, I want more from Locatelli. I will concede that. Yes, I want more consistency. But holy shit, the guy can't be taken out of the lineup because we would absolutely crumble. Yeah, I agree. I think I think Locatelli might be the only player who's played in every game this season. Yeah, it was he and Danilo until Danilo got hurt. Yeah. And that's it. Now I think hey, and Bremer. Happens. Is Bremer? Yeah, so I thought it was Locatelli and Bremer, but I thought Bremer missed one. Bremer may one. have missed one. He missed, yeah. Did he miss the midweek game against Leche? I'm going to pull uh, pull up what I can find right now real quick, but uh, I think Locatelli might be the last guy standing for playing every uh, single uh, game. 
Um, let's see if we got it, if I can track it quick enough here. Um, so Bremer actually, yeah, Bremer and uh, Locatelli. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Bremer Again, and like, Locatelli. That, like, like, does it get shot of him? <laughs> you know? It's, like, that's ridiculously impressive. It's it's crazy. And it just doesn't get talked about enough or appreciated enough. And, hey, it is it is what it is to each their own. At the end of the day, it's all opinions. I respect everyone's opinions. I love you guys. You guys are fantastic. You made the watch along incredible. We had a lot of good laughs. We had the Coco Mello moment. We had the dong shot. Hey, top of the table. Let's see what happens. It's nice to sit on top and just wait for them. And every time we can do that, we just ramp up that pressure on them a little bit. And you know what? Last season, there was only one team that could have been the anti-Napoli and the FIGC made sure that didn't happen. There was a uh, a post yesterday that is so fitting. And uh, Juventini, you know, we, uh, we live through this all the time. But uh, it's not a lie, you know. And we talk about it all the time. Amici di nessuno. Um, it's there for us all to see, always. And uh, I'm going to post this for all of you right now real quick so that you can see because... While a parody account and whatnot and just jokes and everything, it's spot on. It's spot on and it's completely accurate. And I'll pull it up here for all of us to see. But there you go. There you go. <laughs> Love that account too. <laughs> Juventus are at the top of the table in Syria. There is your Italian federation. If there's ever been a more accurate tweet... I haven't seen it, okay? I haven't seen it. It's accurate. It's accurate as hell. They took us out of the mix last season. We were the only anti-Napoli out there. The only one that could have added pressure to that run for them, okay? Yeah. Probably wouldn't have changed things overall based on how we were, but we were the only ones that could have probably done it. This year, Inter, it's us. I hope we can do it. And are we maybe setting up for another Cinque Maggio moment? Oh, man. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, man. I always said it's not a matter of if, but it's when Juventus gets the next one. I am going to be absolutely ruthless, everybody. You know that. I've kept receipts. Oh, baby. And every week, I keep fighting the good fight there on Twitter land and everything. So you know what? Guys, get out there. Show some love. If you're not on Twitter, well, to X now, whatever. Follow, subscribe to us, the AJC. Follow all of us on the team. You're going to get some good laughs and see the banter and everything. But, oh, man, the past two weeks, you've seen it, Lou. I've been giving it to everybody. Dom, yeah, yeah, all those yeah. guys. Letting them absolutely have it. Out. Yeah. Anthony, uh, my good friend from Inter Worldwide, wants to do some collaborations before that game. I've always been respectful. I've always been good. But I'll tell you right now, I might not be for this next show because uh, I'm pretty Big fired up about November 26th. The anticipation might kill me, having to wait this long, Lou, for this game. This is the biggest Derby d'Italia since Sari was in charge. When yeah. they were like, that, that's the last time both were like neck and neck for the title. Like that yeah. is, it's exciting. It's, it's, a, it's got that feel it's, to it, it's right? It's huge. Like, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a, a massive, massive uh, swing either way, whichever way it falls. It's going to be huge. All right. This is a long wait, November 26th. I'm going to be struggling. I'm going to be dying to get to this one. But uh, the good news is, guys, it's the international break. So whatever scandal is brewing, whoever is getting suspended, uh, we'll have you covered. So we'll we'll just forget about the intergame game probably about two weeks because there you knows. go. We'll have uh we'll have a fun live show. Um, I believe it was RB Comps mentioned yesterday we should do a show and try and bring the team together. Everyone, Lex, uh, Lou, Luca, Lucci, Ant, uh, Lex, uh, Omar. We're gonna try to bring one maybe during the international break where we all come on and let's just have a fun chat about. Uh, about uh, Juve in general. Grimaldo came up yesterday for me. 
a player I always wanted at Juventus. I heard a Be uh, Benfica fan lose his mind because he said he was never appreciated. And now that he's gone, they realize just yeah. how bad they Liar. lost him. The contributions this guy has had this he he's just crushing this year. I want a Grimaldo so bad, man. Like, so bad. But, uh, yeah, he's doing great. Oh, well. It's another one uh, we missed. It is what it is. We're going to try and get the whole team together for a show. Tony Trim's into it. Let's go. Let's go. And, yeah, Joey, I know, buddy. I know. You were big on uh, Grimaldo for a long time. A long time. It I'm is just what saying, it is. Get the whole team together next week. We're going to make Joe break down all of his famous pizza recipes. It'll be fun. <laughs> you know what? Oh, man. We're, we're going to have a lot of fun with that one. Bring the team together. Yeah, he could tell you the many different ways uh, to uh, enjoy pineapple, not just on pizza. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're going to we're gonna have some fun. You guys, enjoy however Syria unfolds here. I'll bring you the daily update videos. Okay, we'll have a live show during international break. Hopefully, none of our players get injured. And then... We get ready for the big one, November 26th. I absolutely can't wait. Hopefully, it ends with us giving Inter the big day. I hope. I hope. Take care. Enjoy, everybody. Lou, an absolute pleasure, as always. Got to get you on more, brother, okay? And everybody, show some love to uh, Lou yeah. for all the work he does on Twitter for the news. Okay, this guy, I have no idea how you're doing it. You've been working double time uh, with Omar out and whatnot. And Vincenzo, Omar was with us. Uh, it was absolutely great having him on. He was He's doing good. He was here with us yesterday on the match day preview, all right? So he's doing well, and he appreciates everybody asking and uh, making sure that he's good. Thank you to you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, you guys enjoyed it and whatnot, but uh, hey, it's time to rock and roll. Let's see what happens. Sule, come on, brother. Come on, man. Sule begs a brace. Frozenone gets a win. I'm buying a Sule kit. Uh, Sule, uh, Frozenone kit uh, tomorrow, hands down. All right. Do whatever you need to to uh, sacrifice, you know, goats at the uh, the owl god, you know, whatever, like. Sit, burn some sage, pray the Sule, like whatever we need to like get get that win today. Whatever you got to do, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. All right, uh, let's hope uh, for uh, Frozen on a Juve's B side. Okay, Barneche getting one. Maybe Kyle George plays and gets one. Uh, Sule, all of them. Come on, come on. Yeah. Show them, show them that you're Bianconeri and uh, take it to uh, Inter. Would love nothing more. Take care, everybody. As always. Oh, what do we got? Oh, daughter's projected B day was May 5th, landed on the third. That would have been something, eh? Cinque Maggio always coming up there. Maybe yeah. we have a similar scenario this season. Let's see. Take care, everybody. A lot of fun. As always, live chat, you guys are uh, huge. Take care. Fino alla fine. Forza Juve. Screw the Merda Zuri. All right. No matter what happens today, November 26th, their ass is ours. All right. And we'll fuck them up. Let's go. Take care, everybody. Yeah.